Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Worship Splits with Terry. Today I am going to start a bit of a series of sorts to answer probably the most asked, frequently asked question on the channel. Hey Terry, which line should I grind? <laughs> and the answer, as usual, is it totally depends. So uh, why, why are people asking this question? Well, I mean, I've been playing this game since, I believe, er, late 2017, early 2018, just short after it came out, uh, it came out from the, um, from the closed beta. And, you know, if you've been playing this for this long, you're pretty familiar with what the different uh, tech tree lines are doing and what the different ships types are doing and what all these kind of things are about. But um, if you're new, Right, and you're you're new today. Back back then, we had two lines. <laughs> we had the the American and the Japanese line. That was it. And the uh, the alternate the alternate history battleship line and the the um, the gunboat destroyers and the Japanese and none of that existed. So I, I did a bit of image editing. It took me a while, but um, this and <laughs> this is the tech tree. If you put it all together that we have today, we're not even talking about the premium ships except for those that are actually listed in the tech tree. But uh, these are all the different <laughs> tech tree ships. And there's a lot of them. So put yourselves into the shoes of somebody who just started playing the game and who comes into this and says, like, how am I going to decide where I'm, what I'm going to do first? Should I grind one line all the way to tier 10? Which line should I go for? I have no idea. So let's go through this a little bit in, and this is not going to be all, all in this video, but um, this is going to be some beginner stuff, some basic stuff, something for people who are new to the game and who just kind of need a bit of an orientation of how they should approach this. So if you, if you know everything about everything and you're familiar with all the ship types, there's probably not going to be an awful lot of new things for you here today. But anyway, let's do this. So... The first thing that I would like to point out, and if we look at the battle wiki, which is somewhere in here, I believe. Um, what was that thing? This one? Yes, I would this this one. Uh, the battle wiki claims that there are four ship types: destroyers, cruisers, battleships, and aircraft carriers. And uh, they have a difficulty rating that says that cruisers are the easiest ships to play followed by battleships, then destroyers, and then aircraft carriers. I wholeheartedly agree with the aircraft carrier bit, but um, I quite disagree with the other one. I think uh, I would definitely say battleships are the easiest types to play, uh, probably, probably followed by destroyers, and cruisers are definitely not the easiest ships to play in the game, unless I'm reading this difficulty the wrong way around and they're trying to say that carriers are the easiest and uh, cruisers are the hardest. But... Uh, uh, the other thing that's wrong with this is that there are not four ships type, four ship types in this game. Uh, this is a misconception. It's a, or it's an oversimplification, right? Because uh, they're, they're not, they are more than four ship types. So let's let's begin with um, four. We'll go into the ship, the different ship types in in, in more detail. I, I'll give you a quick rundown. But we'll begin with the roles for these ships once we get to that. So what ship types do we have? In terms of destroyers, we actually have, and let's, back, let's go back over to the tech tree because that makes more sense. We have uh, the classic torpedo boat destroyers. So we were talking about the uh, Japanese uh, line that goes up to the Shimakaze. These are torpedo boat destroyers. Their main function is to drop torpedoes on enemy things from stealth. We have... Um, we have gunboat destroyers. Probably the, the best uh, example for gunboat destroyers are the Soviet destroyers going up to the Khabarovsk because that little split here at the end gives them a more balanced outlook. Uh, we then uh, we then have all kinds of things in the middle. You know, there's there's always a gradient. Like it, it could be very debatable. You could say that high tier American destroyers are probably working as either torpedo or gunboat destroyers, and uh, You'd, you'd, you'd have to have a similar conversation about things like the Pan-Asian destroyers. So uh, lots, of, lots of aspects in that. Then, after destroyers, we have uh, 
what we could say destroyer leaders, large destroyers, scout cruisers, that sort of field. So if we're talking about the um, the German line going up to the Elbing, so that bit here starting at tier seven, uh, these are definitely, I would say, on kind of on that fence. Uh, and then the uh, the French line uh, going up, well, there's only one going up to Kleber. Uh, the higher tier ones are definitely what I would uh, what I would uh, classify as a very very large destroyer or scout cruiser or similar things. Then uh, we have then we have light cruisers, and again there's a bit of a gradient there, right? So if you start out with the British, you've got the ultra light cruisers. You often hear me saying that the Minotaur is probably one of the best tier ten destroyers. <laughs> That is because it is a very light cruiser, and uh, light cruiser will have more guns. They have, they at least the British have an amazing amount of torpedoes, and they have smoke screens as well. So, a lot of the gameplay sort of is similar, but the, the surface detection isn't going to be quite as good. There are a couple of premiums hanging around in in other corners, but uh, generally, light cruisers are ships that you would use as screens. And we'll, we'll talk about the roles in a little bit. And there's, again, a gradient from like the ultralight cruisers up to things like the uh, the, the Soviet cruisers, which uh, ending up at the Alexander Nevsky is, because Nevsky has 180 millimeter guns, technically not a light cruiser anymore. So, but sort of still falls in that classification. Then we've got heavy cruisers. And again, there's a complete range of what these heavy cruisers are. We've got torpedo cruisers, with things like like the Japanese cruiser line, uh, which which will which is devolving very quickly into the heavy to stealth torpedo cruiser sort of thing, uh, we've got gun cruisers like the German uh, the German cruisers, even though they do have torpedoes, but they are uh, they have re re relatively powerful guns. Or the American heavy cruiser line, which uh, has an in, in, which has very very good rates of fire. Uh, still, these are support ships in the end. Then uh, there are not in the tech tree, but in the um, but in the uh, in the premium section, well to a degree in the pe in the tech tree as well. So if we look for example at the petrol petrol at the petrol <laughs> Petro Pavlovsk, there you go. Uh, these things, or maybe the Henri, uh, at uh, not the uh, the, yeah, the Henri on the French line. Uh, these things you could almost classify as super cruisers or close to battle cruisers in their designs, similar with um, with the Dutch tech tree. So the uh, the higher tier Dutch tech tree ships are, for all intents and purposes, battle cruisers almost. Right? Um, you've got then real battle cruisers, <laughs> like for example the new German battleship line, uh, which which we don't see here yet because that's my personal account, but uh, which is going to be in here and which is going to go up to the Schlieffen once it comes out. These are actual battle cruisers. Uh, you could you get a couple of battle cruisers uh, scattered into the into the tech tree lines as well, but then you get to the actual battleships, and there again you have to distinguish between say German battleships, which are assault battleships, and you've got uh, things like the Japanese line, which are long range uh, guns for, uh, gun platforms. You've got specialized lines like the British, which have um, which are more lightly armored but rely on very good high explosive shells. So each line sort of has a bit of a gimmick to it and and has has a sort sort of purpose but there are definitely a lot more a lot more classes of ships in game that and and this matters because it really influences how you're going to be playing these ships so let, I, I said I was going to talk about the roles very briefly so let's not go to the port let's go back here so if you're a destroyer what is your role I I have said screening Right? What does screening mean? Let's talk about screening very briefly. This is a team game. Um, you're not out there on your own doing your own thing, but um, uh, these ship classes exist for a reason. So your, your capital ships, your carriers and your battleships are the core of your fleet. And you, your, your team of seven is technically a fleet. So these things are tanky. These things are having very big guns. But these things are also not particularly well um, maneuverable. Well, the carriers don't have big guns, but they have the airplanes. Um, these these are the ships that you need to protect. So if you're playing anything on the low line, then you are damage dealers. You are there to, um, you know, provide gunfire support at mid to long ranges, 
mostly. I'm simplifying here. And to provide things like uh, scouting and things like air support if you're playing in a carrier. If you're playing, if you're playing any of the upper half here, you're screening ships. So you are in your in, in your especially in your cruisers, you are oftentimes very well suited to support your battleships. You're there to make sure the enemy light ships don't get anywhere near. And you are prime target for the enemy heavy guns. So you're there to protect to a degree your team from these things. Now not everybody plays like that, but it kind of helps keeping that in mind when you're asking me these sort of questions. And in the destroyers you are screened to a degree, but you're also scout force, you're also there to uh, you're 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 the light uh, you're the vanguard, you're the light force, you're there to scout, you're there to um, to do to use your speed to to capture objectives and these kind of things. And if you can manage to get through the enemy screen, then you can use your torpedoes to do large amounts of damage. So that's sort of very roughly the so the, the kind of role distribution. Now let's get back to the original question: um, which uh, which line should I then play? Well, we'll get into the diff into the really the differences in in a couple of successive videos that I'm going to be making about the topic. But generally, I would ex I would I would recommend if you're a new player and you have no idea what you're going to do, um, don't go too far, because look at the let's look at one line that I haven't actually that I haven't actually unlocked right so let's look at the um, let's look at the French destroyers here and you see that in tier, tier one you get a cruiser and you get that for free and that's just your tier one ship you just need to play a couple of games with it to unlock tier two and then you can forget about it again uh, tier two in order to get to tier two it's 700 experience you can see that there on the bottom right corner of that of that icon and then 2,500 to get to tier 3, to, uh, 7,200 to get to tier 4, 14,500 to, to get to tier 5, and then 36,000 to get to tier 6. So tier 5, tier 6 is sort of a is sort of a um, a tier where I would recommend that you so, that you if you're starting fresh out, that we would recommend that you sort of stop and evaluate if the type of ship, the class of ship that you're playing. Is, is fun for you and if you're enjoying it. Because also look at the price, right? So for example, if I look at the Normandy here, uh, this thing costs 805,000 uh, silver. Now, I, I silver for me is meaningless at this point, but for somebody who starts the game new, you're not gonna have all that much silver. It's gonna come in over time from playing and from various things, but you, uh, the investment starts, uh, the investment starts getting getting a lot higher, up to millions uh, in 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 the higher tiers. So, grind getting to tier ten is a is a large investment because first of all you get to I mean if you if you add up the the number of of experience points here that you need just to get to tier eight, nine, and ten, you're talking about what is it, four hundred, six fifty, seven fifty, so almost eight hundred thousand experience points that you need to get. Uh, to 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 grind through these tiers here, and we're also obviously talking about uh, about research, right? Because if we're not looking at something that's actually um, something that's not actually a premium ship, uh, you you have to uh, you have to upgrade these ships, and you have to use you have to use blueprints, which is a resource that you need to gather and guarantee. I guarantee you, you're going to be short on them. That uh, to to you know upgrade your ship and all these kind of things. So. There's a lot of there's a lot of work involved to get through uh, to get through the tech tree. So I would generally recommend playing up to mid tier to just kind of get a bit of an idea if you like this particular style of ship. Now, a lot of a lot of uh, lines are changing very radically. So, for example, if we look at the German cruisers. Uh, up to tier six, they're light cruisers. Suddenly, starting at tier seven, they're heavy cruisers, and they play differently. And you might find that, no, you didn't enjoy that anymore. Then play up to T6, which is perfectly fine. But I would recommend trying a couple of things and uh, trying a couple of lines that sound interesting to you from, from the perspective. And like I said, I will talk about more in detail uh, about the different classes going forward. But uh, that, that is generally what I would recommend until you find the play style that you enjoy. So for example, me. Right, I enjoy a I enjoy a very aggressive playstyle. I enjoy getting up uh, getting up close and personal, and then I, I enjoy making tactical plays. 
So, for example, one of my favorite lines would be the German battleship line. Why? Because it's a very tanky line. They have uh, the best armor in the game and uh, they allow me to, and they have a really good amount of firepower at mid-range. So they allow me to, to uh, you know, play aggressively and, uh, and, you know, exploit tactical positions. But at the same time, you sort of need to have a bit of experience and, uh, and, and map awareness and, and just overview. And this can be overwhelming at the beginning. Does that mean this is a good or bad line for beginners? Not necessarily, because in mid tiers, this doesn't all matter as much as it does in higher tiers. But that's why I'm saying don't just try to focus one line all the way through to tier 10, because it's going to get really frustrating. On the on the other end of the spectrum, you've got something like the Japanese battleships, which are uh, much more focused on playing from long range, which are not as re not as high in requirements in terms of knowing what you're doing. So. There are certainly lines which are easier to play at uh, uh, easier to play for someone who's not an aggressive player and who prefers to you know have a more ha have, have a more you know slightly relaxed less chaotic less um, less action packed uh, play style and uh, the same goes for for all the lines and you know like I said we'll just have to go through the details there but I would recommend Go up to mid tier, see if you enjoy this, and just try around a bit, because you don't really want to play at at the high tiers. Like um, the tier eight is is a is a good stop for a lot of people, where they say we don't really want to play tier nine and ten just because it's too stressful and it's too much and it's it's uh, it's too demanding. And uh, just just play to the tier where you enjoy and try a couple of things and find what playstyle suits you and what kind of class of ship suits you, and then you'll be comfortable with it. And then you've always got something you can fall back to if you're trying something new and say, okay, I don't, I really don't enjoy this, this particular line. I'm not gonna really go there. So that was a very brief attempt at trying to answer the most frequently asked question. <laughs> Terry, which line should I grind? Uh, it depends. You need to find your play style. And like I said, I will try to make a bit more overview about the ship classes because there are definitely more than four. Uh, and uh, that's uh, that's all going to come up in future videos. So for now, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.